Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today on the show. It is Garrett Keeler, and he is the founder of Lenders Academy, and he has some great knowledge he's going to share with you today, and you're going to be very amazed. So keep your ears on and listen carefully because what he has to say could be a life changer for you. So Garrett, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me, first of all. Um, it's a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure. To um, meet you. you know, I'll just go right into my story. I, uh, I'm 30 years old now. I, funny enough, became a real estate agent when I was 18 years old. Wow. Um, you know, ran into the same issues that a lot of people run into. You know, everyone's mother, brother, sister, grandfather is already a real estate agent, and as yeah. a younger kid, you don't really come in. Um, you know, having a whole lot of connections. So um, I did it for a little while and then uh, went to college in Arizona, um, started a couple businesses, sold one in particular, um, and then was lucky enough to move to New York. Um, at that time, uh, you know, I had started another business in hospitality um, and so you can see sort of a serial entrepreneur entrepreneur right. um, was later able to uh, to sell that right before uh, COVID hit, funny enough. Yeah. And I found myself in sort of this same thing that everyone was in, right? The same situation where I'm like, damn, what do I do now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, for the longest time, my inspiration was my father. He actually has been a lender for nearly 40 years now. He worked for all the major banks, and he's the one that pushed me into real estate uh, in the first place when I was 18, right? And so I didn't know too much about it. He's always been a good mentor uh, when it comes to both life and general skills, but also in real estate. I just never really understood um you know, how lending worked uh, until I really um, uh, started to understand his business. And and when he described it to me, I was like, wow, why didn't you tell me earlier that you were doing this big of deals at this velocity and dealing with, in some cases, celebrities? Um, and so I'll get into that business. Uh, he and I are partners on a company called Keeler Capital, right? It's our last name. Mm-hmm. And uh, and to date, Keeler Capital has done nearly, uh, I want to say closing on a billion dollars in transactions. Um, and so we're, we're a very small shop. We're a small shop based out of Newport Beach, California. And we do, um, for the listeners that don't uh, quite know what hard money is or private money is, um, you know, we do a lot of unique deals, mainly in the non-owner occupied space. So... We are not the mortgage lender that's helping someone buy their forever home. We are the person who is helping, say, an investor do a $10 million fix and flip in Newport Beach or in Seattle, Washington. We're the, uh, the lender that is helping someone, say, pull cash out of their property. Maybe they own a $5 million property or $2 million property. Um, and they need cash next week for some business purpose. They're buying another property. Um, you know, they're starting a, a business outside of real estate, whatever it is, non-consumer loans, business purpose loans meant for uh, creating profit, right, for that mm -hmm. borrower. Um, and so uh, I was lucky enough to to get into the business quickly, learn from my father, and then uh, kind of expand on, on what we were doing. Um, and so I've kind of given you a, an example of what mortgage lending is, right, versus what we do, which is first trustee lending, right? Very similar, um, you know, but we are only lending, again, to people who are uh, who are trying to make profits in real estate. Um, and so that's kind of the difference there is the someone's going to go live in the home, that's traditional mortgage lending. Someone's going to do for business purpose. That's what we do. And it's kind of interchangeable uh, between private money and hard money lending, like those two terms are mm -hmm. kind of interchangeable. Um, and so mortgage lending, it, it's a fun business. It's It's been great. Um, and I like to educate people now through uh, 
my course hard uh, course lenders academy and so lenders academy just to get right into it i think that's where we're headed anyways um and the purpose of this uh interview lenders academy is an all-in-one platform in which someone can go from knowing nearly nothing about real estate to uh, becoming a lender and nearly replicating my business. Now, there's one thing I should mention is that there's a divide in my business. 50% um, of my business is, again, what we call private money lending. That's where I find a super unique deal and I go raise that capital from private individuals to fund that deal. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So an example would be, again, say a fix and flip in Malibu, California. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's dilapidated. Maybe the property needs, you know, $5 million in additional work. And we'll go ahead and we'll physically raise that money because banks do not want to touch it. Right. They don't right. want to touch something like that. Now, what I teach is not that. I don't want my students having to go raise capital. What I teach is brokering uh, hard money loans to larger institutions. So there are other lenders out there um, that are doing billions of dollars in trans transactions per month. And they look to brokers like me, if I'm not doing a direct deal, they look to brokers like me who have a super simple, say million dollar fix and flip that doesn't need too much work super safe. Mm -hmm. They'll go up very to very high leverage points. Um, and as long as it fits within their credit box and what they're willing to do, they can easily fund um, deals that I provide and I can ultimately earn a commission on those deals. So that's what I teach within Lenders Academy. So you had mentioned about private money and you mentioned about hard money. I think for a lot of listeners they are, you know, they understand about um, investing in general, but they don't hear a lot about the concept about private money versus hard money. Maybe you can go mm -hmm. a little bit in depth and just like explain to the listeners the difference between the two. Yeah. A lot of people get, get very confused and they're, it's, it is a little confusing because without in-depth knowledge about lending, you know, uh, it's difficult to say where, uh, well, look at it like a Venn diagram, right? Mm -hmm. um, in the middle, there's a, in a real estate deal. Now, a private money lender can fund this deal and also a hard money lender can fund this deal uh, depending on the deal terms, right? Yes. And the deal structure um, and the property itself. Now with private money, you always got to think, okay, what if it's more unique, it's going to probably head over to the private money side because mm -hmm. larger institutions would like to do volume, right? So if you look at uh, Keeler Capital, for example, on the private side, mm -hmm. we do things like, oh, uh, the property is 25 acres where a hard money lender, a institutionally backed hard money lender likely wouldn't touch acreage over, say, 10 acres, right? right. 15 acres. Right. There's other uh, things such as, um, you know, mid construction mm -hmm. lenders on the institutional side, on the hard money lending institutional side, they don't want to touch something that's mid construction. Right. It shows uh, a lot of risk within the property. It shows a lot of risk within the deal. Um, and so someone like that would need to come to the private money side in which we go to investors and say, hey, guys. We have this borrower, we have this property, we believe in it, we're doing X amount of leverage, right? Low leverage. So we know for a fact, uh, you know, uh, they have a significant down payment to reconfirm their commitment to the property and the deal. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll bring that to investors and we'll say, we believe in this deal. Would you like to fund it? And ultimately, we're, we'll raise capital at, say, 10% uh, or 12%. Mm -hmm. And then we'll take a small spread in between there, right? So we'll take a small spread with an interest rate. Right. Um, again, on the hard money side, if it's a simple cookie cutter fix and flip or like a rental property, I'll go bring that to my institutional lenders, my investors, my capital partners there, and they'll fund that thing in two weeks, three weeks, right? right? And so for those, it makes a lot more sense for a borrower to go to the institutional side 
because they'll get higher leverage. They'll get more money on the purchase if it's a purchase, right? right? If it's a refinance, they'll get more money on the refinance. But on my private side, investors, the individuals, the high net worth individuals that I need to invest in these deals, they want to make sure they are not going to get screwed by someone who isn't going to pay, say, in month two or three, or maybe the project fails. Right. And when, now, when you look at lending as a whole, um, even when you look at, say, Chase bank loans, right? Right. What's the collateral for these lenders, right? Yeah. If someone stops paying, obviously, the property will go into foreclosure, and that property that property will be taken back. Now, collab the collateral is the actual down payment. Right. And when you look look again at this private money side, you say to yourself, okay, well, what's the benefit? What's the um, protective factor for someone who's going to invest in my private money deals? Well, right. it would be, say, a 40% down payment or a 35% down payment. Mm -hmm. Whereas in on the institutionally backed hard money side, mm -hmm. you're going to see um, something like a 20% down payment. Right. But they're doing right. hundreds and hundreds of loans. And they just, they're okay with some people foreclosing. They just want to make sure the majority of the loans are good. And in that way, they can be more effective and more competitive on bringing clients in. Right. Right. So it's really about leverage, deal uniqueness, right? Deal risk. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's the entire, um, I think that's a good explanation when it comes to uh, deciphering the differences between private money and institutionally backed hard money. I know it's a it's a clear nuance there. <laughs> Not no, many it's... people get a front row seat in. <laughs> it's actually clear and concise. I I get it. I get it. And mm -hmm. you know, I, I was wondering, does is when it comes to um, uh, mortgage lending and it comes to you know a brokerage rent lending and stuff like that, if someone's interested in doing this, is it hard to get into this field? So traditionally speaking, yes. Now. I'll start with traditional mortgage lending, right? With traditional mortgage lending, you need to have a real estate license and you need to have an NMLS license if you're doing those consumer loans that we don't do. Right. Right. Now, with private money and hard money lending, because it's business purpose, um, only some, some states require licensing. Okay. There's another factor to this, and, and it's majority of states that don't need licensing, um, at least to, on the brokering side, mm -hmm. um, if you're the direct lender and you're going to do private lending, and I probably shouldn't go too deep into this because um, per state, it's very different. Right. I don't want to get yeah, yeah. the wrong idea about their specific state. Right. But someone in Florida can uh, can can loan hard money or broker hard money loan, lend, excuse me, broker uh, hard money loans without any licenses. So it's a beautiful thing, right? So mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an easy path to uh, to uh, getting into real estate without needing money, but being on the inside track, the financing right. track, where people physically bring you deals and you get to see their business plan, right? You get right. to see what they're doing, whether it's on the fix and flip side or maybe the construction project side, or maybe they're building a rental portfolio, right? Right. And so your original question was, um, you know, kind of what are the barriers to entry to become a lender? Mm -hmm. Now, Traditionally, at least from what I've seen, uh, if I wanted to become a hard money lender, I would need to go basically work for a larger company. Mm -hmm. Now, there's plenty of larger companies out there that are hiring, hiring, hiring. It's a booming business. But those companies, uh, you know, it's of course, it's a corporate structure. They take a good portion of what you earn. Um, but they do offer, you know, training just like any other, say, real estate uh, uh, sales agency. Right. right? Mm-hmm or brokerage. Um, and so there's a trade-off there. What I teach within Lenders Academy is a replication of my brokering business. Okay. And uh, and that's perfect for someone who, uh, you know, either doesn't know anything about real estate. You could certainly join my course, join my program, uh, become a member of the community, um, and learn, learn the entire business from scratch. Um, but what I've seen from, and we just launched about a month ago, what I've seen from my current students is that a lot of them actually came from real estate. Um, my three biggest, um, uh, call it uh, avatars, my student avatars mm -hmm. are real estate wholesalers, real estate agents, mm -hmm. and real estate investors. 
Okay. And so I'll, I'll kind of explain uh, each individual benefit to each one of those professions, right? Mm -hmm. um, have you heard of, of real estate wholesaling? I have heard of it. Yes. Okay, good. So for the audience, you know, real estate wholesalers, if you don't know what it is, real estate wholesaling is you're basically looking for a worn down property that someone doesn't want to fix and they want to get out of. Maybe it's costing them money every month. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they can't rent it. They just want to get rid of it. Right. Well, it's an opportunity for either an investor or a wholesaler to wrap that into contract, right? Yeah. And so they would call this distressed uh, seller and try to wrap that property in contract. We're talking specifically about the, the uh, occupation of wholesaling. Right. They would wrap that property in a contract um, and then they would try to sell that to an end buyer for a fee, mm -hmm. right? So an example would be, you know, a, uh, let's just say a $500,000 property in Arizona, it's worn down. Um, they think after they put say a hundred thousand dollars into the rehab, they could sell it for $800,000. Well, a wholesaler would go try to wrap that 500 K property up and then maybe sell it. Uh, with an assignment fee of say twenty five thousand dollars to mm -hmm. an end buyer, who's going to fix that up and then sell it on the open market. Right. right. So it's a big long train, <laughs> right? And so uh, I just had a student join the course who uh, I enlightened on, you know, kind of doubling on fees, mm -hmm. right? So what does that mean? He earns an assignment fee already. Right. I said to him, well, how many buyers do you have on each and every deal? He says, I have about three or four people that want to buy each and every one of my deals. Well, I said, okay, that's fine. It's actually perfect because why don't you earn your assignment fee, but pick the buyer who's going to allow you to be the lender on the deal. Right. Right. And so for wholesalers, there's a huge benefit for them to earn, say, 2% on a loan amount, mm -hmm. right, which could be $400,000 loan amount, so an $8,000 fee. With a two thousand dollar processing fee, they might earn twenty five thousand on the assignment fee and another ten thousand dollar on the loan fee. Right, right. So that's a huge benefit. Then there's the real estate agents who, you know, I've seen in some cases a ninety percent downtick in uh, in uh, business since COVID. Right. COVID rates were low and and everyone was doing super 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 well. Right. Right. Those same real estate agents maybe have gotten used to a lifestyle now that they can't afford. Yeah. Um, now to combat that, they can actually represent a buyer or a seller. And in terms of just representing buyers, they can offer them uh, the service of actually being their real estate agent, finding their property, negotiating, right. you know, doing the whole all the contracts. But they can also say to the buyer, "Hey, listen, I'm also a lender." Um, I can be your lender on this fee, on right. this uh, on this property, right? Mm -hmm. The last thing would be, and I'll go into uh, my own portfolio as an example, would be um, for real estate investors. Now, I have two real estate investor students that aren't necessarily going to go uh, lend money out, mm -hmm. right? But they do want to be sort of finger on the pul pulse when right. it comes to knowing rates, not mm -hmm. being upcharged on rates, right? Right, not being upcharged on fees, physically earning fees on their own transaction, right? And so, I just had a a student come to me and say, "Yeah, I've paid nearly three hundred thousand dollars in fees over seven different transactions." Um, I brought up my own portfolio to him. I said, "Listen, I own nearly twelve million dollars in real estate um, that I've accumulated over the last four to five years," mm -hmm. and I've done each and every one of the, those loans for myself, right? Right. Those are rental properties. I, I do. Uh, I have a larger Airbnb portfolio, mm -hmm. right? Mostly in in Scottsdale, Arizona, which was an amazing market. Yeah. Um, but I went ahead and I saved myself nearly two hundred eighty thousand dollars in fees that I would have ultimately paid to someone like me, right? Right. Um, in some cases, lenders will upcharge the rate and you don't really know what's going on in the back end. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a substantial advantage for someone to be on the inside track of either lending to someone else, right? No, mm -hmm. or lending to themselves in a way. Yeah. Right. So I hope that makes sense. No, that definitely mm -hmm. makes sense.
-hmm. So this course, how can people get involved in your course? Yeah, absolutely. So you would go to lendersacademy.io. That's lendersacademy.io. And you would just watch this simple video. I have a little educational video. Sign up for a call for me. I don't accept everyone, um, but uh, you know we're we're gaining steam. We're getting lots of people. We're getting lots of interest. And um, as long as the person seems like they would be successful um, in the occupation, I go ahead and push them. Um, you know to ultimately join our community and our course. Now, is this mainly focused for real estate agents, or this is really a broad verse of of, uh, of occupations in the real estate area? So there's different types yeah. of occupations that would fit into this course. Yeah, I would say that it makes a whole ton of sense for someone who's already in real estate. And when I was first creating the course in the community, I said to myself, well, what if I want to make it so that anyone can do it, right? Mm -hmm. And so the course is so broad, it goes into elementary level real estate. Like what mm -hmm. is a single family home? One right, of four right. units, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, now there's there's uh, a portion of that, but then it quickly goes into lending, into financing. It goes into the math equations necessary to actually become a lender at things you got to yeah. know. It's not too difficult. It's not rocket science, but- there isn't an educational platform out there today, or there wasn't until Lenders Academy, that can actually teach someone to become a lender without them having to go the traditional route, the corporate route of working for someone else and getting half their fees taken away. Right. right. There's one more thing I want to mention about Lenders Academy that I equip my students with. You know, the course itself is about 107 videos. It mm -hmm. took me nearly nine months to to create. Right. Um. And I wanted to be this holistic thing. You see, you see a lot of gurus these days selling what is, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 percent of a business. Yeah. Lenders Academy is the full thing start to finish with ongoing support. One to two calls a week. Uh, we do group calls a week where people can ask questions because there's so many scenarios within real estate, right? Whether you're a yeah. real estate agent or a wholesaler or a lender. Right. Right. And it takes someone with knowledge to go through the you know, 10,000 scenarios that there could be. Yeah. Right? So I really wanted to make sure that my students were getting everything on their own as far as like the pre-recorded messaging mm -hmm. as well as the ongoing support um, so that no one gets left in the dust and feels like, oh, damn, I wasn't able to learn, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, I would say 50% of its value though is the vetted, um, lender and capital partner sheet that I provide to my lender. So every lender and every capital partner that I use in my own business for my own loans, I supply a direct relationship to the reps at those firms, funds, and family offices. And so uh, anyone who goes through my course is able to directly access those, those lenders without going through me. They're mm -hmm. completely passed on to them and they can begin their business immediately. There's also action points within the course that ask you to, hey, start your LLC, right? Here's what state you need to do it in. Right. Um, you know, here's how you create your logo. Here's how you create landing, page, landing pages, funnels. There's a whole marketing module that's really uh, in-depth in terms of actually getting the clients, getting the borrowers. Because right. what is the job? After you have the money, Mm -hmm. right? You have the education. All you really need to do is find the borrower. You need to find the client. And so that's the most important thing, right? And that's yes. how you're just bringing in business, bringing in business. So if you had to say like, what are the top three benefits, like from your, your, your program, you know, you just went over, like, what are some of the, the main benefits that people are going to walk away from that they didn't have previously when they came into your program? Yeah, um, that's a great question. Someone asked me this uh, the other day. One of the main benefits, I think, is an opening of anyone's eyes, really, an opening of your eyes, right? Mm -hmm. Every building, look around at your neighborhood, right? Whether you live in a, you know, an apartment building or a gated community or, you know, big city, a small city, whatever it is, nearly everything was built off of debt, mm -hmm. right? Everything. Our country is built off debt. We owe so much money to many other countries, um, to our own people, really. Mm -hmm. And um, 
And so it's important to know how financing works and it's important to know the rules within financing right. so that it isn't just a question mark, mm -hmm. right? Uh, you don't want to look at the world and, and just kind of stumble on by and say, oh, I don't know how that how that skyscraper came about, right? Yeah. Someone didn't come in with cash. They likely took debt um, from a bank, you know, from a private investor. They right. likely took money from someone else to make that dream a reality. Right. And so I would say that's the biggest, the biggest, biggest uh, benefit to, to becoming a lender and learning financing. Right. And what do you say um, to like some of the maybe uniqueness of your course? Because in, in, there's so many courses out there. What makes yours so unique compared to others out there? Yeah, there's a ton of real estate courses out there. Like uh, I'm, I really hate being the pushy salesman and, 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 you know, if you're interested in wholesaling, go do wholesaling. If you're interested in being a real estate agent, you want to be on selling sunset, go do that. That's your yeah. dream. Um, the beautiful thing about lending is that you never have to leave your desk. Right. Um, you know, I hate to rag on real estate agents, but, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I've been one, right? I've, right? I've physically lived it. And I know the struggle of walking a couple to 10 different homes them saying, yes, we're going to buy, 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 buy. You spend mm -hmm. about 10, 12 hours walking them through, walking them through homes and yeah. they never buy. They say, oh, maybe next year. Right? right. Well, with lending, again, you don't have to leave your desk. Right. Even right. when we do appraisals, the appraisals are ordered by the actual capital partner. Right. right? So someone mm -hmm. goes out there and does an appraisal. You don't need to even be in the same state. I do loans. I live in New York City currently. Our mm -hmm. office is in California. Right. Right. And we, we do loans in, in Florida. We do loans in Texas, Washington, California, Hawaii. We do a lot of loans in Hawaii, even it being, you know, you know thousands of miles away. Yeah. So um, I hope that answered your question. No, it does. Um, go ahead. For the audience, I'd love to go over like a deal scenario, right? Like mm -hmm. a lot of people are confused about how lenders make money in the first place. Um, and so I'll give you a quick example if that's okay. Yeah, definitely. So let's just say you're helping someone do a bridge loan, right? A bridge loan is basically transactional funding. We do a ton of them. It requires no rehab cash. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, serve the purpose of actually getting them to rehab the home. Right. But someone might be uh, you know, in need of, of buying a property and they need quick cash, right? They would come yeah. to someone like us, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to pay higher interest, but... Um, you know, that's for a purpose, right? Right. So let's just say uh, an investor is looking at a property. Um, they think the area is going to increase in value. And they say, hey, I'm buying this million dollar property. Garrett, mm -hmm. what can you give me? I would go ahead and give that person nearly 80% of the purchase price. Right. So think about 80% of a million dollars, it's $800,000. Right. They would come in with $200,000. Mm -hmm. But where we really earn fees and in, and interest and um and our origination and by the way lenders um earn what's called an origination fee right mm -hmm. and that's how we we primarily get paid it's a lump sum at closing so when they close on the property you get paid out your commission right right you know we'll charge sometimes two and three percent on that transaction so let's take uh you know if I were to pull my calculator out really quick, mm -hmm. a sec, you know, let's just take that $800,000 loan amount and let's just say I charge two and a half percent. Right. Or one of my students charges two and a half percent. That's a $20,000 commission. Right. Uh, on top of that, there's processing fees, sometimes two or $3,000, sometimes $1,000, sometimes nothing, right? You want to stay competitive in the market because yeah. there's plenty of lenders out there, but there aren't too many. Right. right? Um, and so generally I get people who come to me. I don't really do that much outreach anymore. Right. Um, but a $20,000 commission is substantial. Again, the velocity of commissions to your uh, business is much higher because I never have to spend um, 10, 12, 15 hours on a single client. Right. As maybe a real estate agent would have to do. Right. Right. And so in that case, I can close two to five deals a month, and that's pretty standard for us. Right. right. Mm -hmm. 
anywhere between $200,000 loans all the way up to $30 million loans. Right. right. And we have outlets and capital partners that will go up to those loan amounts. So, I mean, you can do, you guys can do the math for yourself. If I'm speaking to the audience, mm -hmm. do 2% on a $30 million loan and see what that comes out to. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's a, it's a su substantial business. Um, you can make a lot of money in the business. And as far as time efficiency, I, I'd argue that it's one of the best businesses in real estate, right? You've got your finger on the pulse of real estate. Right. It seems yeah. like you can you can really get into this business at any time of your life. Like you don't have to, you know, go from the get go and and be in real estate at a, such an early age and then go mm -hmm. into brokerage like you know like you did. You really you, this is a career that you could actually obtain the knowledge and if you need certifications, you can get the certifications you need for your state. But it really is 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 a opportunity at any time of your life. You could actually transition over as long as you understand the concept and get the right education for it. And will mm -hmm. it take long to get the right education, or is something like your course could actually give people enough knowledge where they could begin their own career? Yeah, it's funny. I can from my portal, I can track the progress of each and what, every one of my students. And so far, our first ten students seem to be getting through it, which is a good sign, right? They yeah seems to be, um, you know, not something they're putting off, let's say right. that. So yeah, um, it seems like everyone's finishing within 30 to 45 days and then they're ready to get going, right? They're ready to uh, chase after clients and start doing deals. And so really it could be as, as quick as 30 days. Oh, wow. Now, do yeah. you need, when you're, when, when you're in this type of business, can you be solo or is this something that you have to develop a team and, ha you know, create your own, your own small business? And mm -hmm. you know, is it something like that? That's an amazing question. So um, we have a team, we've built a, what is, I consider a very small shop. We mm -hmm. have about five, six people working with us, mm -hmm. um, but you can do it on a solo mission or you can grow. You can start as a solo mission, mission, which is what I think everyone should do at the beginning. You should probably right. shouldn't, unless you experience the business, you experience yeah. at least for a year or two. You probably should not be expanding that quickly. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a one-man show can make a million dollars a year, right? A one-man show can do, as long as you stay on it, you're diligent, you're doing the outreach, and you're physically making calls, calling referral partners, right? Um, right? And you're bringing in business, you can make a six to seven figure, what I think is called a salary, right? Your yeah. business can make six to seven figures um, within the second year. That's amazing. Now, yeah. where can people find your your course? Is it on your website or is yeah. it a specific landing page? Yeah, so we, we have a nice little landing page. You would find it at lendersacademy.io. That's lendersacademy.io. You can find me on all social media. It's just Lenders Academy. Super simple. There's tons of free value on each and every one of my pages. And uh, sooner or later, I'll have an ebook out if you're interested, but you're, you know, you're kind of iffy on what lending is still. Also, I have a YouTube channel where you can go and I physically describe what hard money lending is. And I describe uh, a little bit more about uh, you know, my income streams and, you know, I have multiple within real estate, such as my uh, rental portfolio, which I had mentioned, but um, it's a great place to go for free value, for free education. And, uh, and ultimately uh, look forward to seeing you guys there. And do you provide any other services besides the coaching, besides the ebook? Um, you also provide your own services to clients as well, if they need your services. Yeah, we're rolling out a one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one, uh, mentor program. Mm -hmm. So for people who want to be essentially handheld, mm -hmm. right? All the way through through their first transaction. We do something like that as well. Um, that can be added on to the program later. Um, if you're looking for a hard money loan, feel free to reach out. gkeeler at keelercapital.com. Um, aside from that, you know, uh, we take investor capital. If you're looking for a 10, 11, 12% return on our private money side, but uh, really I'm pushing the education. I'm super excited about teaching people and okay. getting people uh, uh, sort of aware of, of what they can accomplish with, right. with 
nearly a billion dollars back in you in 30, 45 days. So yeah, that's amazing. Now, yeah. if you wanted to emphasize on a couple of things, what would you like the listeners to understand from everything that we talked about today? Maybe like three important factors that you'd like to emphasize on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, whether it's uh, you know, investing, if you have some capital set aside, whether it's becoming a real estate agent, wholesaling, whether it's fix and flipping a property, right? Doing a house hack, lending. Mm -hmm. um, I encourage everyone to get into real estate. I think it's the best business in the world. It's been nearly proven to be the best business in, world, yeah. in the world because it has the most millionaires generated out of any industry. Yep. Um, and that's a mere fact. And uh, it's changed my life. So, um, you know, I'm super happy about it. I think everyone should kind of, whether you're dabbling in real estate or, or not, I think everyone should kind of head in that direction. Well, I'll have to agree with you. I have a whole family that, you know, focuses on real estate and they've all, each and every one of them have done very well for themselves. So I'll definitely yes. back you up on that comment. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, miss. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been amazing, Garrett. Before we go, is there anything else you'd like to add to the conversation? I think that's about it. Find me on socials, again, Lenders Academy or Garrett Keeler um, and follow us on our journey to a uh, thousand students. That's amazing. Well, Garrett, this has been amazing. Your information has been unbelievably, uh, it's, it's just a whirlwind of information that I feel is very beneficial. And the way you explained it was very simplistic. So it's really under mm -hmm. easy to understand. And I definitely think it's something that, you know, if people are interested in or ha always have been interested in and they haven't really pursued it yet, this is definitely the time, I think, to maybe step back and think about, you know, what you want for your future and, uh, awesome. you know, definitely check you out. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Stacey. Oh, you're very welcome. And you have a great day. Cool. You as well.